In this video, we're going to go over the anomalies you see in that crank signal up there. Is that the problem with the truck, or is that just something we see because we have a great scope? Um, we're going to check out that Auto Nerd swag right there. Uh, hearing some of it's coming down the line, looking forward to it. And finally, we're going to set up, figure out how to set up a falling edge counter, all using Pico 7. So uh, we've got a lot to do, so hang on. Two thousand twenty one Nissan Frontier truck. This truck has a V six in it. I believe it's a three point eight. It is a intermittent crank sensor code. I believe it's uh, P zero three three five. I believe is the crank sensor code. But it only sets the code under acceleration or under load. And when it does, uh, the truck uh, really goes into fail-safe type mode the throttle is very limited makes it a real pain in the butt to drive so um i get this thing in and the first thing i want to do obviously is i want to look at the crank sensor and i've back probed this signal at the computer so right through the first part of this capture it is idling and then you could see i kind of gassed it up a little bit in here and then let it return to idle so a couple things we want to go over on this is uh, let's get this one out of the way first. So this could be a rabbit hole, and this is why I, I want to go over this. Um, I'm fighting a crank sensor code, and next thing you know, I get a crank sensor signal that has these humps in it. So right off the bat, I mean, that sticks out to me. It could that be my problem? And wherever there's a hump, you see there's a voltage drop here. And then once we get on up in here where I gassed it up some, it gets even worse. This is an ignition sink. I believe I'm on number two cylinder and you can also see this same hump in that signal wire. Well, what I don't want you guys to do is get too god-awful hung up on stuff like this. Um, this is a product of having a good sample rate. And what the scope is seeing is really high current things uh, turning on. And you're able to see that through the drops in some of the really sensitive circuits. And I believe the reason we're seeing it is I have my scope grounded to battery negative. All of these signals ground through the computer, and I'm sure there's some common circuitry within the computer. And then the computer has an external ground to a, a bolt or, you know, the engine block or, or wherever the ECU grounds at. So this could send somebody down the rabbit hole looking for something. Because we do have a crank code in this truck, and that is a, a very weird anomaly in a crank sensor signal. So... Be aware, you're going to see stuff like this when you're using your scope. So um, this is where practice comes in. Look at a lot of different signals. And on the finished capture or the after capture, I'll show you exactly what this is. But as soon as I saw it, yes, it stuck out. And then I realized it's very rhythmic and it's more than likely something really high current turning on and off. And you can see this is one cycle and one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six high current things turning on within one fire cycle. So um, I'm thinking right now it's the fuel injectors because it is high pressure injection and those injectors run a lot of amperage and uh, quite a bit of voltage. So that covers that. Now, as far as the counter, um, this is something kind of neat. If you want to know how many toggles are in here from space to space, you can just use a measurement and you would find that tab here. If it's not here, then you could open this and find it over here and then put a star on it and then it would move it here for you. It'd be kind of like a favorites. So I'm going to do just a quick measurement. 
Um, lots of different ways you can get it to measure. I'm just going to do a falling edge count, which is where's right there, and channel A, and I'm going to do between the rulers, and then I'm going to move the rulers out. And I want it to count the first falling edge, so I can't put the ruler too far over. And then I want to just come over here so it counts all of them. And there they are, 18. And it seems like it's a little bit live, so if I move it in, it, it is, it is uh, counting down for me. So that little feature's there for you. You could count rising edge, falling edge. Just be sure if you have a lot of noise, um, a lot of ignition noise especially, that if, say, you had a spike shooting down right here because of some sort of ignition noise, it may count it. So you may have to put a little filter on that just so it doesn't count um, other things, I guess is the, the bulk of the story there. So let's move on over and see if we can figure out what's wrong with this crank sensor signal. Let's go in here where... Let's go in here where I actually gassed it up a little bit. Now you start to see the problem. So let's bring our rulers over here and see if this will work. Uh, it, 14. So there's only 14 in there. Well, I dare say we're missing a few in here. So at RPM, I'm missing some signals. But we know back at idle, we have all 18. Uh, let me get this off the screen. Uh, let me zoom everything back down to normal. You guys have to forgive me here. I'm still, it's like throwing a baseball with my left hand and I'm right handed using Pico 7, but I'm making myself do it. So let's scroll back in here at idle a little bit. We notice at idle that everything's even. So, I don't think there's a tooth missing off the flywheel. This thing reads off the flex plate. But, once we get up here into RPM. Alright, zoom, let's go. Um, then the signal starts breaking down. See, we miss, we're missing teeth there. There. Um... We had one there, but we have none there. So the gap is ever changing. And at this point, the computer is freaking out. I'm setting the crank sensor code, throttle's going numb. And this is just me idling in the bay. So the scope is telling me that I'm missing teeth at our RPM, but I'm not missing them at idle. Um, I'm thinking signal plate ideal this whole time. And I've got some pictures I'm going to show you. The crank sensor on this motor is centered. It has uh, half of the hole is formed by the transmission bell housing, and the other half is, is formed by the engine block. And the alignment of those two uh, systems is crucial to this sensor setting perfectly so it doesn't miss any of the teeth. Although the Flex plate is machined. It's not finely machined, so there is a little variation in it as it, as the as it spins. And if the crank sensor is cocked in the bore, then of course it's going to miss a tooth or two. And so I made the call. The transmission had shifted, and I figured there was a dowel pin missing because we had gotten word that a transmission had put in, been put in this truck early in its life. Uh, the truck had 66,000 on it when I got it. Um, we had heard maybe somewhere around 20, the transmission got put in it at another dealer because a hole got knocked in the pan. They have plastic oil pans on them. So we made the call. I wanted to pull the transmission out and look at the dowel pins. Let me show you guys a couple of pictures real quick. And uh, you have to bear with me. These 
this crank sensor is hard to get to. This is before the work was done. This is the crank sensor. And you can see that edge right there should be aligned with that. So the crank sensor is actually sitting in there crooked. That edge should be here. Um, here's a cup, here's a, a mirror. That's my mirror. I'm trying to take a picture for you to see without the crank sensor in. Uh, it's really hard to do, but you can see it's not lined up. That's the empty hole there. And here's another one. You can see the gap there. Well, when my guy pulled the transmission out, he calls me and he says, Mike, there's nothing wrong with the dowel pins. They're both in there. And I'm like, oh shit, what do we uh what do we got going on now? So I go down there and look and come to find out whoever put the trans in originally actually put the dowel pin in the wrong hole. The dowel pin should be here. It, evidently it fell out the new trans came with them I, I don't know the scenario it wasn't our shop that did this but the dowel pin got put in the wrong hole so this is the engine block so the dowel pin supposed to be here they put it in here so the mating surface to the transmission this is where the dowel pin should have been they had it in the wrong hole and you can see right there how the dowel pin kind of smashed into the bell housing and it did not fit very well and it cocked the transmission and of course created the problem that we had I do not have an after picture because my guy that pulled this trans out and fixed this is pretty damn fast and he got it all back together before I got a picture of how the crank sensor is supposed to set in the bore. But I do have an aperture capture, and I want to show you what those mysterious uh, humps were in the crank sensor signal. So I hope you enjoyed this so far. Uh, fairly common problem. A lot of times I see the dowel pins missing. I think this is the first time I've ever seen one actually get put in the wrong spot and uh, definitely creates an issue with the crank sensor signal so you guys putting transmissions in be careful this little uh this little monster could be out there ready to eat your lunch so uh, hang on and let me get another capture up and um show you a few more things all right so here's the after capture um truck is fixed i did the same thing i kind of idled it kind of revved it right in here power braked it a little bit and then uh, let it come back down to idle and these humps right here we'll go over what they are but uh, first off we'll look at the signal here's idle nice and neat all 18 toggles are there there's our mysterious anomaly and let's get over here right in this area is where I revved it up a little bit and this is where this is where it would have failed with the crank sensor messed up in the bore right in here and you can really see that crank sensor gets ugly and what's causing that is I had a feeling it was the high pressure injectors uh, they they run up to 65 volts and can pull some serious amperage so um, all I did was pull the, uh, the fuse that feeds the driver and put an amp clamp around it, just mainly to sink it. And you can see you're looking at, you know, 13.3 amps. And what we're doing is we're seeing that drop in our crank sensor signal. I mean, it lines up perfectly. So... That is just, like I said, something to be aware of. Usually, on non-direct injected engines, you can see the coil, the ignition coils charging in the crank sensor signals. Um, but with these high-pressure injectors, they're pulling more current than the ignition coils, and that's, uh, that's kind of showing up right there. So... 
it's a good thing to pay attention to stuff like that. Um, if you're new to using your scope, my only suggestion is get the scope out and use it because you're going to see stuff like this, especially if you've got your sample rate set a little bit because um, if you got that thing dialed in, it's just a big antenna and it's going to pick up stuff. And something like this could, you know, I ain't saying you'd misdiagnose it, but you could spend a lot of time maybe chasing wires and isolating circuits and this and that for something that inevitably you can't fix. So there's that. This was a cool little case study. Not the most uh, technical, but uh, still had some good things in there that I wanted to bring to light. Uh, speaking to bring to light, I want to show you this. Um, Trevor over at Auto Nerds posted this in the public session, so, uh, section, so I'm sure he won't mind me sharing here. Uh, evidently, he's got some new swag coming down the line. Uh, basically, it said stay tuned to the website for availability, and uh, he posted this picture. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a hoodie type of a guy. So I'm going to keep an eye out for Auto Nerds. Uh, swag whether it's a beanie or a hoodie or I'm not sure what he's up to over there but as always I uh, appreciate you guys supporting my channel uh, Auto Nerds really supports my channel too uh, I have links in all my description boxes and on my homepage and probably even on Facebook now so if you need anything Pico wise uh, need some cool swag check them out over there um, it'd be worth your time especially if you're looking to buy a scope all right, guys, I will see you on the next one, and uh, you guys have a good one.